Long before computers or even the printing press, humans verbally communicated with one another. Writing things out in longhand took a very long time, and it was much easier and quicker to tell someone what you wanted them to know. Better yet, if you wanted them to remember it, you told them a story. Stories are woven into our history as humans, yet far too few people feel like telling stories are appropriate in business. However, stories have the power to engage and educate. In short, stories get things done. The movie is a thriller, and your heart pounds almost through your chest as the heroine turns the corner to confront the villain. You're safe at home, curled up on the couch with a loved one, and your body is reacting like it's in a high-stress situation. From a neurochemical and endocrine point of view, you are in a high-stress situation. The movie, or really the story, triggers your brain to produce the same neurochemicals it would as if you were really in the situation. The only difference between you and the heroine is that you aren't at risk. But shh, your body doesn't know that. We've all experienced times when we've been watching TV, seeing a movie, reading a good book, that when it stopped, we recognized that our heart rate was up. Our bodies and minds are designed to simulate things happening. In fact, there are special parts of our brain that seem to be designed to prevent us from acting out our dreams. Instead of flailing wildly, our motor control is disconnected and we can silently play out stories to ourselves without the trouble of potential harm. Sometimes there's a limiting belief that stands between us and writing good stories into our corporate communications. That's the belief that we're not good at telling stories. The problem with this belief is it's not consistent with our experiences. We dream most nights, even if we can't remember them. Each dream is a story of absolute fiction that our mind makes up to stitch together all of our experiences from the day. We make up several new stories each night. If it only takes 10,000 hours to reach mastery of something, well then all of us have earned mastery in story creation. We may not have conscious knowledge of how it all fits together, but we've got a storytelling experience. The kinds of stories that we're talking about for business writing are often little more than painting a scene and placing the character in it. Painting the scene is simply about identifying and relating key components, and then allowing the reader to fill in the gaps. We didn't have to identify the color of the couch you were on while watching the thriller movie. As the reader, you filled in that detail yourself, often conveniently with the color of your couch. Creating scenes starts by identifying what emotion you want to evoke, and then finding a time in your life when that emotion came naturally. From there, it's necessary only to identify what key elements were present to make that emotion come to life. When you relate those elements, you end up with a scene, and therefore a story. Scenes may be where things begin, but invariably, stories start to get interesting with characters, someone that we can identify with, believe in, or root for. Sometimes we craft stories to allow the reader to drop themselves into the middle and to become the hero. And other times, we stretch them into caring about the character that we create. In either case, the character drives the action. If you want to make sure your communication is remembered, make sure it's got a story with a scene and a character.